What's going on, AZ Sportsman family? Thank you so very much for coming back in. I really do appreciate it. In this video, I want to talk about Game 3, Phoenix Suns versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Why the Phoenix Suns lost and what we can look forward to in Game 4. That's what we're going to dive into today, guys. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. Guys, welcome back in. Now, if you guys can do me one big favor, smash that like button and subscribe to the AZ Sports Fan on YouTube. We're on the road to 7K, hopefully by the beginning of football season, which is actually coming a lot sooner than we think. So definitely subscribe and smash that like button as well. I would really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's go and just jump right into it, guys. Let's talk about Game 3, Phoenix Suns versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, uh, this game that we've seen, Game 3, I, I feel like it's a game that we've seen in, in multiple different series in the playoffs. Now, what I mean by that is uh, I, I feel like we've seen this type of game versus the Lakers. I feel like we've seen this type of game versus the Clippers. Now, obviously, it didn't happen versus the Denver Nuggets. We ended up sweeping them in four, which, which was amazing. And, and I know a lot of people had that expectations going into this series, but Keep in mind, guys, after game two or towards the end of game two, Giannis was feeling himself. Giannis was, uh, you know, basically like breaking out in front of our eyes in terms of how to not so much beat the Phoenix Suns, but play the Phoenix Suns. And, and that type of energy actually brought in to this game here. Now, I implore all Phoenix Suns fans out there, do not panic. We've seen this before. Sometimes these losses are probably the best things to happen for our Phoenix Suns so they can regroup, they can re-go back to the drawing board, and Monty Williams can come up with a plan to take down the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, this is one thing I say. Do not panic, but be frustrated. Yes, absolutely be frustrated. This game going into, you know, game three, uh, the first game in Milwaukee, was an opportunity for the Phoenix Suns to be 3-0. and uh, Now, I understand, you know, the odds of a team being 3-0, and they most likely will win the championship. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, speculation saying that, you know, NBA won't allow this. Um, you know, sometimes people might say, hey, have you not heard of the, the referee, Scott Foster, that was refereeing this game? Uh, he's what, I think it's what, 11 consecutive games that, you know, he's refereed a game that Chris Paul has played, something along those lines, and he's lost every single game with Chris Paul playing, which is really unfortunate when it comes down to that. So you can be, you know, the the referees did it, you can be the NBA did it, but I think the truth of the matter is that the Phoenix Suns came out and they came out flat. Um, now, you can look at the stats all you want. Now, I do have a few stats that I definitely want to talk about here. I'll post it on the screen right now. So at 48.2 for the Phoenix Suns, um, and then you had 47.8 for the Milwaukee Bucks. The three-point shot for the Phoenix Suns was at atrocious. It, it was bad. It was really, really bad. Nine out of 31, shooting 29%. And then you look at the Milwaukee Bucks, 14 out of 36, 38.9%. Uh, they're shooting in terms of, you know, three-pointers. Uh, free throws, the Phoenix Suns were coming in here trying to set a, you know, a, a NBA record in terms of, uh, you, you know, the free throws, uh, everything was looking good for the Phoenix Suns. They can't miss. And what happens? Devin Booker misses some shots. CP3 misses some shots. We ended up going 11 and 16, shooting was at 68.8%. I think our total was, I think it was like 91, 92% in this playoffs. And we were looking like a very good free throw, uh, you know, shooting team coming into this game. But obviously this game was really weird. It was really weird to begin with. Now, good thing is that, you know, after the first quarter, we looked like we were good. Uh, we were leading after the first quarter, 28 to 25. I was happy. I was like, wow, this could be an opportunity for the Phoenix Suns to really take advantage here. But after the first quarter, going into the second quarter, it seemed like everything was looking good. And then bam, it happened. The Milwaukee Bucks hit some sort of stride and the Phoenix Suns just fell flat. Nothing was hitting at all. Now, one of the biggest highlights of this game, and I want to go ahead and make sure that it's got its recognition that it deserves, is Cameron Johnson's dunk on P.J. Tucker. My goodness, man. This thing was absolutely amazing. Probably the highlight of the entire game for a Phoenix Suns fan. This thing was a sight to see. Going back into the game, guys. This game, like I said a little earlier, it, it, it was a lot of sloppiness, a lot of flat energy when it came down to the Phoenix Suns. No shots were hitting. Um, in terms of our, our star players, now the biggest person I want to talk about is, you know, obviously Devin Booker, uh, the star for the uh, the Phoenix Suns. Now, I thought it was very, very weird that Devin Booker had a 
not so good game uh, in the first half. Now, in the second half, he played a little bit into the third, but then he sat down. I think the announcer said something along the lines that Monty Williams took him to the side and was actually talking to him. Now, I don't think this was Devin Booker's night at all. Does he deserve to get criticized? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if you're a high caliber uh, player like Devin Booker, a lot of people expect you to be on every single day. Now, I think that this game was kind of one of those games where he had an off night, and it's very obvious that he had an off night. So, you know, the announcer said that, you know, Monty Williams took him to the side and he actually talked to him. Now, what he said with Monty Williams and what the conversation was about, I don't know. But it was really weird after that conversation. We didn't see Devin Booker at all. We didn't see him in the fourth quarter. We didn't see him towards the end of the third quarter. It almost kind of seemed like the Phoenix Suns already you know, wave the white flag out. And they were saying, this game is already a loss. We're going to go back to the drawing board and see what we could do for game four. But that was very weird for a Phoenix Suns fan to not see Devin Booker out there, our star that, you know, has shined a lot on a national level in these playoffs uh, because Devin Booker's had a really you know, great time. Now, they always, you know, every player hits some sort of roadblock. And I do think that this was Devin Booker's roadblock here. But it was weird to me that he didn't come back out to play some more minutes. Now, CP3 seemed to have been frustrated as well. There was definitely some words that were exchanged uh, with the team. I believe Jake Crowder was also getting to a bickering match with one of the players of the, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks as well. So overall, this game was just really, really weird from the get. Um, now, right now, we're 2-1 and one going into the series, which sucks because honestly, we have one more game in Milwaukee, which can be decided in any which way. Now also keep in mind the series uh, with Atlanta Hawks and the Milwaukee Bucks, when Giannis was out, there was a split moment where, uh, you know, the team seemed really, really good. Like they were hitting their stride without Giannis. Um, and they looked like they were an unstoppable team. When Giannis came back, everybody was like, oh my goodness, the Bucks are better without Giannis. What's happening? And now I do think that Giannis is getting to the point where, I, I think they're finally gelling to the point where, man, Phoenix Suns need to look out. They really do. Uh, we need to figure out what we could do here. Giannis Antetokounmpo, and this guy is feeling himself right now, man. He's feeling himself. He, he's getting rebounds every which way. Um, he's looking dominant. Um, you know, DeAndre Ayton, we were so used to seeing DeAndre Ayton in, in a big focal point, you know, in these playoff games. And it kind of almost seems like if it doesn't happen in the beginning, that kind of gets thrown out the window. Um, and, and I'm also tired about, you know, playing hero ball too. <laughs> I, I don't like that the Phoenix Suns, now I get it when it works, it works. It, it's fantastic. But playing hero ball kind of seems a little annoying to me, especially when we're only down like seven. Uh, sometimes we're, we're, we're putting so much weight on the threes. It's almost kind of like we live by the three and then we die by the threes. If the threes aren't hitting it, then we're going to lose this game. Last thing I want to talk about and in terms of stats is going to be the uh, the rebounds just in general. I, I think the rebounds just in general, they had 47 rebounds and we had 36. Now, the one thing that I really want to point out is offensive rebounds. The second chances after they missed some shots. The numbers are absolutely atrocious when it comes down to the Phoenix Suns. Offensive rebounds for the Bucks, 13. Offensive rebounds for the Suns, 6. This right here tells me that we don't have anybody under the basket, ready to get the rebound. Um, and, and I get it. I, I think we're so used to hitting these three-pointers. We're so used to hitting these jump shots, the mid-ranges, all that different stuff. We're used to it. So a lot of times players aren't under there trying to get the offensive rebound because they're already trying to go back there um, and play some defense. But I think we need to change the game plan, especially because they're taking everything into the paint right now, especially with Giannis, getting the second opportunities and getting you know those points that miss. From there, Giannis is right there to go ahead and either tip it in or give it another crack at it again. And I think that's right there where the Phoenix Suns need to clean it up. We need to clean it up defensively. Um, it almost seems like we we kind of didn't want to be there. Um, now, now, they could have. They very well could have. They, they could be like, man, we wanted to win this game. Cool. Okay. But it didn't show up on the court, if that makes sense. So let me know what your guys' thoughts and concerns about Game 3 Put it on the comments below, guys. I am very curious to figure out what you have to say. Are you guys panicking? Are you not panicking? My words of wisdom is going to be don't panic. We've seen this before. But should you be upset? Yeah, you definitely should be upset as a Suns fan. Uh, but all we can do is, you know, brush it off and go and look into game four, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And that's all I got for this episode. Have a great rest of your day.